This video is going to take you through the derivative rules that you guys watched last week and also take you through some practice problems that are part of your homework so you can get a little preview of what's to come. So we're going to start by just going over the rules really quickly. Um, the derivative of a constant. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of some constant k is going to end up being 0. The derivative of a sum. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus g of x. That's going to be equal to the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. The difference rule. I'm taking the derivative of f of x minus g of x, a difference. That's going to be the derivative of f minus the derivative of g. The product rule if you remember, it has a little bit more to it. So f of x times g of x product is going to be equal to the first function times the derivative of the second function plus that second function times the derivative of the first function. And there's a geometric way to see that that you can watch another video about um, to understand where that product rule comes from. The constant multiple rule is actually part of the product rule. So let's say I had k times f of x, so a constant times a function. Well, if I apply the product rule, I'm going to have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the constant, which is 0. And so what's going to end up happening is that this whole second term of the product rule is just gone. So instead of writing a whole second part, we can just think about the k, the constant, kind of hangs out in front, sits in front, and we just worry about taking the derivative of that function. The quotient rule, so taking the derivative with respect to x of f of x divided by g of x is going to be equal to the lower function times the derivative of the higher function minus the higher function times the derivative of the lower function all over the lower function squared. So low d high minus high d low over low low is the way you can remember that. Our trig derivatives, we have six trig functions, sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, and then their reciprocals, cosecant of x, secant of x, and cotangent of x. So the derivatives, the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. The derivative of secant is secant of x times, co times tangent of x. Remember, it's secant times tangent, not secant of tangent. And then the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. So some things to notice, all the derivatives of the cos have a negative sign in front of them. These two kind of go together. Tangent and cotangent kind of go together. And cosecant and secant kind of go together in terms of how you're going to remember them. If a problem asks you to find where f of x has a horizontal tangent line, what that's really asking is... Where is the derivative f prime equal to 0? Because if something has a horizontal tangent line, that would be a slope of 0. So you're looking for where your derivative is equal to 0. A reminder then, if you need to write the equation of a tangent line, we're going to use point-slope form in here. So at the point a comma f of a, you'll find the derivative at a, okay? So again, the point is a comma f of a, and the slope is the derivative evaluated at a, okay? So this needs to be a number. You need to actually substitute in a and get a value for that slope, but it's represented with the derivative. All right, so some practice problems. You can skip around in this video to anything you want to watch or don't want to watch. Um, this one, we're just going to find the derivative. So y prime equals 
I'm going to swing the 4 down. 4 times 7 is 28, and drop the power, which becomes x to the third. Plus, this is again a constant multiple. The 2 is just going to hang out. And then the derivative of sine is cosine. And that's it. Next one. This one has us do a couple different steps. This is something you might see in a textbook. So we have the original function, and it says to rewrite it. So what I want to see first is that this is really 2 sevenths times 1 over x to the fourth, which means that I can rewrite this as 2 sevenths x to the negative fourth. So when I go to differentiate, I'm going to swing that negative 4 down. So this becomes negative 8 sevenths. And I'm going to drop the power by 1 using the power rule. So to simplify that, then negative 8 stays in the numerator, 7 stays in the denominator, and my x to the fifth can go down to the denominator. All right, this one, finding the derivative, it looks like we could use the quotient rule because we have a division situation going on. But anytime you're dividing by a monomial, a single term in the bottom, I think it helps to do some algebra first. So this is still h of x. I'm not doing calculus yet. I'm going to take 4x to the third divided by x is going to be 4x squared. And I'm going to take 2x divided by x, and that's just going to be 2. And then I'm going to take 5 divided by x. Well, that's just 5 divided by x. So then... Still not doing calculus, still just in algebra land. I can do a rewrite like that last problem and call this x to the negative first because this thing in blue is really 5 times 1 over x. Now it becomes much more straightforward to apply the power rule. So this is going to be 8x. The derivative of 2 is 0. You can write it as a placeholder. And then I'm going to swing this negative 1 down with my 5, so negative 5 and then drop the power. To clean up my answer, I would have 8x minus 5 over x squared. This next one uh, gives us a point, so we're going to write the equation of the tangent line. Well, in order to do that, I know I've got the point 2, 2, so I'm going to start my tangent line by saying y minus equals x minus, I know that 2, the input, and 2, the output, so now this needs to become f prime of 2. So I need to find the derivative, y prime equals 3x squared minus 3, but I need to replace this x with a 2. So 3 times 4 is 12, minus 3 is 9. The slope I just found is 9. Here's my equation of the tangent line. All right, number 12 here, g of t. This one we're going to definitely want the quotient rule because we're dividing by a binomial. So I'm just going to jump right into it. g prime of t equals rho, and parentheses are important, d high minus high d low all over low low or low squared. Now you could clean this up. We could distribute this 6t. So I'm going to have 12t squared plus 30t minus 6t squared. This is a negative 2, but a minus negative 2 is going to become a plus 2 all over this 2t plus 5 squared. Still cleaning up g prime of t. Notice I'm labeling this as the derivative. 12t squared minus 6t squared leaves us with 6t squared plus 30t plus 2. That looks like a t, but that's a plus. And then 2t plus 5 squared. All right, number 18, this is going to say find f prime of c. So I want f prime of negative 1. Well, before I can find f prime of negative 1, I need to just find f prime. So the derivative here is going to require the product rule. Again, parentheses are important. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second 
times the derivative of the first. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to sub in negative 1. So f prime of negative 1. This will be negative 1 squared. This will be negative 1. This will be negative 1. This will be negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Plus 3 is going to be 5 times 9 is 45. Minus, this will be negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5, times a negative 7. So that's going to be 35, which means I believe f prime of negative 1 equals 10. But I'm also doing this on the fly, so check my arithmetic for subbing in negative 1. Call me out if I did something wrong. All right, this one, doing a little rewrite, differentiate, and simplify. So rewriting here, remember I have a monomial. So I'm going to write this as 5 fourths x squared minus 3 fourths. Now to take the derivative, I'm going to swing the 2 down. So 10 fourths x, the derivative of negative 3 fourths is 0. And then simplifying will be 5 halves x. This one. It says to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph at the given point. So here's my f of x, and here's my point. So the equation of the tangent line is going to be an input of 2, an output of 1. And so this, what I'm looking for, is f prime of 2 to fill in the blank. Well, to find f prime of 2, I first need to find f prime of x, which is going to be low d high. Well, the d high, right, is going to be 0 minus high d low all over low squared. So this is negative 16. I'm going to multiply in the 2, right, because that's what I'm finding, over 4 plus 4 squared. So this is negative 32. All over 4 plus 4 is 8, squared is 64. So we're looking at a slope of negative 1 half. So what we're saying is the slope of this tangent line would be negative 1 half, which seems reasonable based on our picture. Okay, these are where things get a little bit interesting, and if I run out of time, I will make a second video to keep going through these problems. It says let f be a differentiable function, so I can take the derivative. I know that f of 2 is 2, f prime of 2 is 5. Then I've got this function g of x is equal to x to the third times f of x. Find the value of g prime of 2. Well, before I want to find g prime of 2, I want to find g prime of x. And that's going to require the product rule. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, I'm going to go through and find g prime of 2. So it's going to be 2 to the third times f prime of 2 plus f of 2 times 3 times 2 squared, right? All of my x's get replaced with 2's. So I'm going to get 8 times f prime of 2 was 5 plus f of 2 was 2 times 3 times 4. Well, 8 times 5 is 40. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. Looks like I have an answer of D for that one. Okay, so let's think about how this looks on a graph. It says the graphs of two differentiable functions, f and g, are shown. Which of the following statements about p, p prime of negative 2 is true? Well, p is equal to f times g. So before I can find p prime of negative 2, I need to just find p prime of x. So that's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So f of, now I'm going to plug in my negative 2, right? So f of negative 2, g prime of negative 2, g of negative 2, f prime of negative 2. f of negative 2 is 0. The slope of g at negative 2 is some sort of positive number. g of negative 2 is some sort of negative number. f prime of negative 2 is some sort of positive slope. So a 0 plus a negative 
will result in p prime of 2 being a no negative number.